Oh, oh, if it isn't my darndest lovely viewer, what brings you here? Is it, is it the lovely thumbnail that you saw? Perhaps the wildly average personality? Well, welcome. I'm so excited to share this video with you about components. F water. All right, I'll see you in the video. So when I click on it, check out how cool this is. <laughs> Guys, what is going on? What is going on, my people? Let me uh, let me turn down the headphones every single time. Every single time, I, I always headphones are way too loud. I. I one of these days, I'll figure it out. Anyway, guys, I wanted to run over a bit of, of advice um, that I have on the front end for components. And, and this is this is senior engineering front end device, uh, advice. So this is something you could take with you. Um, and I, I wanted to talk about it. God, I had I had a Lucid chart up here. Uh, let me find it real quick. I'm going to pull it up on the side. But while it's being pulled up, let me tell you about what I built. So right now we just have a page, uh, real simple. Let's just kind of ignore all the function, all the extra noise, not a big deal. Um, but so we have this wrapper component, which is real simple. Uh, basically it wraps the content of our page. Guys, I'll, I'll show you what it does. Um, so it wraps the content of our page. So we'll never go beyond 1440 pixels. I'll show you where I've used it in a real life example. So if you see how the content here on the left It'll only expand as far as as the the 1440 line. So all this all these components will line up right here on the side, and then obviously get resized as I as I uh, contract the screen. So um, a, kind of this invisible wrapper component is what I'll call it, um, guys. And I have all the code in the description for you to steal. So please steal it. But that's going to be step one. Is kind of these 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 invisible layout s components that that can be really 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 powerful. They're they're potent. They're behind the scenes. Um, and I'll show you again kind of what's going on. Let's just color it real quick. So if we say background red, uh, maybe we'll give it a twenty opacity. And you could see you could see that this wrapper kind of exists in this this container, if you will. Um, and then inevitably after it hits a certain width, and I have it actually at 1440, um, it'll stop. It'll stop expanding, it'll stop growing, and the wrapper will stay the same size, it'll stay centered, all the content will fit, so it's just, just one of those things, guys. So that's that's for you, that's that's off the top, ready for you to steal, um, and the code base in the description below. So the next thing I worked really hard on was this base butt, <clears throat> and, and you can see, see the component itself. We have a lot of props, we have a lot of noise, just kind of ignore it, guys. I'm, I'm thinking of building my own component library for you guys, uh, but let's just look how it's used. Um, so, so first of all, I have, I have all these, these, these props that I can or, or don't have to pass into it, but let's just pass in one like text. <clears throat> let's just go ahead and do that. And you can see it's just, a, it's a simple, but, and then, and then I could pass in a few other things. Uh, let's see. Um, I have a border radius, uh, but I guess, I guess my, my colors I think are associated with it, or maybe my button state is. Uh, but but let's let's just let's just look. There's one or two bugs I realized with the prop being passed in. But what I have is this button state being passed in, and what I have is this on click attribute that's being a custom uh, or within a custom component that you can use. So when I click on it, check out how cool this is. Woo Talk about something cool, guys! Come on, come on. So how I do that, I want to show you guys going into the component is, is I have this, this thing called a loading state within the button and I can control the background color. Um, I have this button class that I'm, I'm passing in to guys. Let me play a little more tunes for us. Boom. Here we go. Uh, but I could pass in this, this button class name. And again, all this code is for y'all to steal. Um, I, I just pass in this button class name directly into my class name for the button and then or excuse me this uh well the button class name goes into the button class name class name but within this button class name uh, I, I just did it to to make it all clean and organized i have a bunch of loading states controlling the colors and then also within the buttons uh uh, uh text and success and all that stuff i have a bunch of loading states in there so how to use this is you simply in your parent component Ignore the child, ignore the base button. It's, it's kind of a, a robust deal, but steal it, steal the code. Um, in your parent component, when you have a, uh, what's it called? You need a button state. 
Guys, if we could take it out of TypeScript real quick, let's let's simplify, let's simplify. I'll keep all the code with TypeScript, but let's simplify for now. All I do, I have a success logic. This is where you can put your, your weight, uh, whatever function you have. Uh, you you want to have your logic with it. And then all I do is just, just submit your form or, or whatever you need to do. And I have the button timeout happen. Uh, and then the button gets reset back to an idle state. So so we can kind of ignore all this just, just to streamline it all. Uh, but basically all I'm doing, let's, let's just flatten out all the logic real quick. Um, basically all I'm doing is setting the button state to loading initially. So when I click on it, boom, it goes to loading, right? And then after that, I want to set it to some sort of success state. Let's say we have a console log in between of like, uh, submitting form. And then we want to set it to a success state after let's, let's fake a, fake a, a submission after a second takes a second to submit the form. And then after the form is submitted, we just want to set it back to idle. So that's how to use the button state, guys. I am thinking about building a component library. Please leave a comment below if you'd like me to. I have a bunch of components from old projects and things I'd love to steal from. Uh, but boom, let's check it out. So boom, success. And then back to idle, it should go just like that. So, uh, but, but the thing I wanted to talk about now that I got my Lucid chart pulled up is, oops, Let's pull this thing back up. Is this when you build components, you got to do kind of four steps, I would say. And this is this is where this is where you, you become real nasty with it. Step one, identify any reusable items. So so if we look at a at a at, at sir, right, this uh, real life example, we have multiple buttons, right? Like up in the up in the nav bar, there's there's a few buttons and then there's a button down here. So one, identify anything reusable. Uh, so that's step one, right? And then step two, what, because I'm sorry, I'm gonna resize this real quick. Step two is call out the differences of the reusable thing. Sorry guys, I actually, actually I, I, need, I need it again one more time. So I mean, call out the differences between the reusable um, uh, items. So look at this, this item versus these items. I can call out the differences. Oh, they have different texts. Right, this one says get more customers today. This says log in. So that's one of our props. Oh, what else is different about it? Well, the radius is different. Well, that's that's another prop. Um, what else is different about it? Well, we have a background color that's different. We have a width that's different. So these could all be props. Um, and then and then obviously there, there's some functionality as well. I forgot I forgot to add that here. Um, there's an on click functionality. So so you can add that as part of your your prop. And then step three is build the thing. And honestly, those three steps alone, you're gonna be crushing it. You're gonna be crushing it. But step four, this is what separates the boys from the men, is you gotta future-proof your, your components in a way that's cheeky. So I'll show you what, what I mean by that. So when I build this, this, this uh, oh, we have a loading state. The reason why I'm getting an error is just because we took out TypeScript. So I'll put that all back. Now that we've kind of seen how to use the, the button state is just pull in a, a button state uh, from use state. Um, guys, so steal this. This is all for y'all. Steal it, steal it, steal it. I'll put this TypeScript back. Um, let's talk about future proofing the buttons. So the reason why I future proof, right? Check this out. So if I want to have a class name on my button, I should be able to pass it in. Right, so if I want BG blue, let's see. So on the right here, I have, I have multiple buttons. If I want to change the background color, I should be able to do it in a, in, a, in a class name way. So if I want to change the background color, this should work. Let me let me remove this uh, uh, radius deal, and I think I think the loading state. So I'll fix the, I'll fix this for you guys by the time uh, I, don't, I don't know what the, the bug is, but I'll fix it for you guys so it works as anticipated. But the idea is I should be able to change if I want to have different different colors or I want different fonts, I should be able to pass this stuff through. And how I'm doing this is through um, inheriting, right? So what I do is pass this class name prop into base button. In, in base button, I'm accepting a class name prop, which is a string. And then in this class name prop, I'm effectively passing it into 
the button down here. So I just, I have butt class name with a few other things, but basically that's what I'm doing is passing the prop down to um, here. But you can see, you can see my button has a little bit more to it. So, um, so I, so I actually put it up here with the butt class name where I'm, where I'm doing a few other things, but, but all together guys, think about your components where you could do stuff like this, where you can still maintain the functionality of the original component. So again, even this on click function, Typically in your in your normal um, React components in Vue, Vue actually has on click on everything. But in React, I, I had to pass in an on click function as well to make this work as a custom component. So really think about your components in a future proof type of way where you can use and reuse traditional things. But guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I think this is a fantastic tutorial. The code is in the description below. I, I hope you enjoyed. I hope there's something to learn here just from a concept standpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. With love.